Today we have a special guest calling in from Hobart in Australia, but you might actually recognise them as the voice of this adventurous little koala. Ordinary. <laughs> Welcome to Nat Time, I'm Hilary and I'm sitting here having a video chat with the amazing Robin Moore. As well as being a well-known voice actor, she's also an inspirational speaker to teachers in Australia and beyond. Welcome Robin, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much Hilary, it's a joy to be with you all. Um, would you like to start by just introducing yourself to us and telling me a bit about who you are? Yes, well, my name is Robin Moore and uh, I'm a fifth generation Tasmanian, uh, but brought up in the outback in Queensland. Um, my dad was a stockman, a drover and a shearer's chef and a wool baler. So um, I grew up in the big sky country. I'm an educator and uh, I'm passionate about lifelong learning and uh, I speak at many, many conferences and uh, what I love is to actually sell people back to themselves so that they can access the, the best part of their character, their uh, dreams and aspirations and pass them on to other people. So uh, it's a big conversation and today we're having a big conversation too. When did you first know that you wanted to be an educator? I, I think it tweaked when I was about four. Um, in the outback, I had nobody to play with, so my toys were my playmates. And I'd sit them in a circle and I'd ask them questions and they'd answer me back with funny voices. And if they got the answer wrong, I'd smash them with a ruler, you know. So <laughs> I, I think, you know, teacher was actually present when I was four and so was my other lifelong love affair and that's being a voiceover artist. So I've always listened to the wireless and characters and um, so part of my uh, vocation now is to actually open this hole in my face and to sell products on TV and to um, actually do cartoon voices like, hello, my name is Blinky Bill and I'm the voice of the famous character that you see on TV that was actually created by a New Zealander called Dorothy Wall. <laughs> and I think you are all extraordinary. <laughs> uh, all of that was shaped at the age of four and uh, then realised later on. So I, I think that, you know, we are all bliss makers in education that was my bliss back then and um, it's just so joyous to find that when you um, enable children to follow their bliss then they can create a really extraordinary life that uh, Blinky often espouses to. I didn't know that Blinkyville was um, created by a New Zealander Yes, oh, in the 1930s, wow, and she was yeah. living in Australia and um, wrote the story for her five-year-old son, and um, he became an icon, and uh, so I was asked to create the voice for him, and he's totally and utterly transformed my life. Um, I can ring uh, children, I'm national patron of Make-A-Wish in Australia and have been for 24 years. And I speak about the power of the word because I can ring children with life-threatening medical conditions as Blinky and their health improves. You know, I can tell children at schools, you know, you are extraordinary and have teenagers at risk come up and they want a big hug and they whisper into your ear, you know, thank you for telling me I'm extraordinary. Now, so anybody under 30 years of age has been probably babysat by me. So, so that's why I'm in love with the power that words have. If, you know, being a crazy little koala uh, can impact people that much, how powerful do we dare to be as educators, as parents, every time we open this hole in our face? You know, so um, I just love encouraging educators to find a child's bliss or create their bliss, enable them to find blissful moments, blissful love affairs, and then enable them to enhance that, to pursue that, to follow it through. Um, both my sons are following their bliss. You know, when my older son was four, he said, Mum, I want to be an actor. Well, he's a self-sustaining actor in New York City. And um, I just love watching the man, you know, and then remembering what the little boy said. And my um, younger son, um, we, one day he was on the floor and he looked up and he said, Mum, and I said, shh, shh, shh. but Mum, it's really important. I said, what is it, Daniel? And he said, I can see a vein up your nose. <laughs> what did he become? An architect, of course. <laughs> architecture is all about space and, you know, looking up and finding holes and what holds things together. I mean, it's just lovely. And they both do voiceovers because they uh, are in love with the power of the word too. 
And, and is that advice you give to educators all the time about the power of the word? Yes, that every moment uh, they have with a child is sacred, is precious. Um, you can give a child a, a life sentence that's empowering or a life sentence that is disempowering. Um, and as we all know, you know, you can just wipe the face of a child by saying, you know, well, what would you know? You're dumb anyway, or you can't do this, or your brother was smarter than you, or, you know, oh, let me do it. You'll never understand this. Where I love the two words, not yet. Yes. Not so when yet. somebody not can't tie their laces, not yet, mm. not yet. Uh, I was at a conference in Adelaide recently. They're, they're really exploring fixed mindset, growth mindset philosophy. And um, primary school children actually opened the conference and they were saying, you know, well, I don't mind when things go wrong because I know that I'm just in the learning pit there. So I just have to figure out how to make this work and how to find out what's missing. Uh, it's just a delicious conversation. So how do you help educators stay resilient and how do you build resilience in children? Well, resilience is a, is a the buzzword at the moment. And uh, I think the, the first thing is to actually go back to the notion of being. Who are we actually being so children pick this up faster than adults and um, to be resilient and have resilience I think there's three doorways through that first of all you have to have access to laughter and um, I just love that small children um, have this beautiful um, affinity with laughter in fact there's a little three-year-old boy who wakes up every morning in Alice Springs and he says mum wake up the day is out there and everything she says, she said, he has this access to laughter. So as educators, it's really important, um, no matter what's going on in a child's life, to bring them somehow back to laughter. And I don't mean through positive thinking. Well, what I do with children and with educators is to have a look at the roller coaster of life. And life is jolly hard. It's tough. It's not fair. Um, and to get children and educators and parents to realise that, um, you know, this is how we grow and we learn and it's actually when we are in a tough situation that we grow our character. So, um, you know, I've got our Make-A-Wish children, um, some of them just make me laugh so much and yet they all have a life-threatening medical condition. Uh, two little girls, twins, were going across to um, America. When they came back, I said, what was the best thing that happened on the trip? And they said, when mum threw up on the plane. <laughs> It's, it's just gorgeous. And as educators, we get snowed under with all the changes and all the challenges, but we have to access laughter, and that's uh, by turning up in our life. People say to me, how do I stay self-empowered and available to laugh? And I say, I take me with me wherever I go. You know, optimism is another doorway through which you can access resilience. And um, optimists are people who can find ponies under piles of manure. You know, when things are tough, they can actually see, what did I learn here? You know, where did I grow myself here? And also passion is another doorway through which we can access resilience. And um, to, to get your passion, I'm a very passionate person. I'm around passionate people and I get to grow passion um, and instill it within people or access it again, even though there's a bit of plaque on top of people. And um, particularly with educators, we need to get back to the source of why we're actually educators, uh, to choose again. And every day we need to choose why are we doing this? Why are we being an educator? For parents, you know, it's easy to hold your newborn baby. That's, that's easy to go, could you, could you, could you, could you, I love you. You know, but as the roller coaster of life gets going, uh, sometimes you hear parents say, you know, oh, if it wasn't for you, Jeremy, I'd have a life. You know, and here's that life sentence that diminishes a child again. Whereas what was the source of your passion? You know, um, Elizabeth Stone said the decision to have a child is momentous. It is like deciding to have your heart walk around outside your body. You know, so we have to find those three things, laughter, optimism and passion. And I think then that grows resilient people. You speak about authorship and being our word. Do you think that small children can access authorship? When I speak about authorship, it's the little children that get it faster than adults. All I say is when you wake up in the morning, you put your foot out on the floor, you get the makeup who you're going to be. Nobody else gets to tell you. Facebook doesn't tell you. The newspaper doesn't tell you. You tell you who you're going to be. 
And so, you know, I say, well, Blinky Bill knows that he's going to be adventure. He's going to be extraordinary. He's going to be kind, you know, curious. And kids just go, wow, I'm going to be friendly. I'm going to be clever today. I'm going to be respectful. And they just pick it up so easily. Adults have a bit more plaque on top of us. But once you say to people, you know, every second of your life, you get to have access to who you're going to be. It's wonderful. I had principals of schools who actually do the lollipop duty and they stop the children in the morning and say, you don't cross the road until you can tell me which empowering word are you going to be today. And they say, you know, um, thoughtfulness, thank you very much. I had a mum who said that in the morning she stands her two children in front of the mirror in the bathroom. She has a white crayon and she draws a big circle around their image in the mirror and she writes extraordinary across their faces in the mirror and then she says which word are you going to be today and as they choose the word she writes the word on the mirror and then when they come home at night she says so you know you were being these words today what happened she gets them to reflect on it so authorship is so easy. It's not in our curriculum in Australia. I don't know whether it's in your curriculum, but you do have in early years, you know, being, belonging, becoming. I would like to add authorship. If you had 30 seconds to get across to our viewers something memorable, what would you say? I would say that being an educator and a parent is the most exquisite, sacred job, vocation, privilege in the world. And though it gets tough sometimes, my beautiful mum had Alzheimer's and one day she said to me, oh, I knew I loved you, I just didn't know who you were. And there's going to be times when, you know, you find it tough, but always remember that the children that, who are in your care, they may not want to remember you some days or may not like you some days, but um, underneath that, they will know that they love you because you were the one who grew them into their magnificence. Thank you so much for joining us virtually on our map today, Robin. It was an amazing talk with you and I'll be um, sharing your website and your Facebook page with our viewers in the description below. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I've just loved every second of it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching Matt Time. Make sure you check out our other videos. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit the like button. See ya. 